Hello, good afternoon. I am Daviani Hunt, and I am the medical director of the Living Well Center at Washington University. And we are here today with Karen Dugan from the Center for Plant-Based Living. You also may know her as XPL Veg Girl. And she is here today to do a cooking demonstration in our beautiful cooking demonstration area at the Living Well Center. Yeah. So we're so happy to have her. Um, Karen is an exceptional um, member of the plant-based community and gives us the best resources. Um, and she's really great at the how-to of lifestyle change. So that's what she's gonna do for us today is um, give us her how-to and demonstration of three beautiful summertime recipes. So I hope you enjoy. And without further ado, Ms. Karen. Thank you, Dr. Hunt. I'm so thrilled to be back here. It's a beautiful, beautiful facility. So easy to work in. So um, let's get the show started, okay? Oh, and actually, I'm going to take off my mask. Is that the protocol again? We can do that? Okay. Woo! It's so nice to be mask-free. Someday soon, someday soon. Okay. We have three um, really fun recipes today. We're going to do a banh mi bowl. Um, so we're just really taking the bread away from that. Not that I have anything against the bread, but we're going to go a little bit lighter today. And um, we're also going to be doing a white bean and avocado salad wrap which it has some ingredients in it that you wouldn't think that you would absolutely love, but I promise you, you'll probably be addicted to it. And then of course, an Italian chopped salad, and we're gonna be making an Italian salad dressing, um, kind of a light vinaigrette, or I'm just gonna, kind of like a, a heavy vinaigrette. Um, and we're gonna cream that down by using um, a little bit of tahini. So if you've never used tahini, we're using it today, and it's Really, really great bait for a lot of dressings and a lot of sauces and things like that. All right, so the banh mi bowl. First, what we're going to do is in a bowl, in a bowl, we're going to create, um, we're going to create a little bit of like, we're going to do like a quick pickle, right? Because you know, a banh mi has like pickled vegetables in it as well. And it, you don't have to do this overnight. It's nice if you can, but you certainly can just whip this thing up right now. So, what we're going to do is put a little bit of vinegar, and this is just white, natural rice vinegar, any grocery store, it's a couple of dollars, no big deal. We're going to add the vinegar, the lime juice, a little bit of maple syrup, some amino, coconut aminos. Now coconut, you can get coconut aminos, or you can do um, like, a, uh, like a soy sauce or shoyu or tamari or anything like that. So any kind of savory. Okay, so we have that. Here's our coconut aminos. Now, if you are around a Trader Joe's, um, I would suggest going to Trader Joe's and getting their coconut aminos because they are really inexpensive. It's like $2.99 at Trader Joe's as opposed to like $6.99 at a lot of grocery stores. So a little tip for you. I'm gonna put everything back here that I'm not using so that when we're finished, we just have beautiful dishes. Now, um, let's see, I've added the coconut aminos. I'm gonna add the lime. So a little bit, if you have some really tough lemons and lime, you can do a couple of things. You can either put them in the microwave for about 10 to 20 seconds to get them really nice and soft and juicy, or just roll them. Just use a little bit of elbow, elbow grease, get in there, roll it, roll it, roll it, and you'll feel that it really softens up. So take your knife, cut it in half, and you can use a citrus juicer if you want, um, but you know what, you can also just use a fork. So, Limes don't have any, or the limes today in our grocery stores don't have any seeds in them, so it's easy enough to just add that juice directly to your mixture. Okay, now a little bit of maple syrup, just to give it some sweetness. Yes, just a little bit. We're gonna keep this out here because we're gonna use this guy again and a little bit of red pepper flakes. This is totally up to you. I like a little bit of heat, but if, if you can't, you know, if it's not your thing, then it's not your thing, so don't worry about it. Okay, so um, we're gonna combine everything here. Yeah, give that a really good whisk. It'll start to smell really delicious. Now, 
Now, what we're going to do here is take just about half of it out into another bowl. And I'm going to cut up our tofu. Now, I have right here, um, I have this organic, super firm tofu. And I don't know where I can put this so everybody can see it. We can just talk about it too. You don't want to get a silken tofu. You just want to get a regular tofu. A silken tofu is not a brand, but rather a type. And silken, it's going to be very silky. You don't want to use it here because we're going to cube this up and you want those cubes to really stay intact. A silken tofu would just disintegrate. So it's really good for like smoothies and dips and things like that. But today we want our tofu to really stand up. We want to put a fork in it. So um, we're going to use just a regular firm tofu. And you, if you have a tofu press, use it. That's fine, but you certainly don't have to. Just get some nice, clean kitchen towels. You give it a good squeeze. I'm going to take the tofu, and I'm just going to cube it up. There are several ways that you can make this, this one recipe. Um, if you want, you can marinate this overnight. You can do a quick marinade, which is what we're going to do. You can bake the tofu after it's been marinated. You can sear the tofu in your skillet after it's been marinated. Uh, whatever you want. I, I really hope that you'll take this recipe and play around with it because there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Do not be afraid of your food. And it's all about kitchen confidence too, right? So just take this one recipe or any of these recipes and use them over the course of the next, you know, three to four weeks and play around with them. So what I'm going to do here is just take a little bit of our tofu and put it into one of our bowls, just so it gets, it soaks up that marinade. You can put it in this bowl or a bowl, um, then you, or you could put it into, sometimes what I like to do is when I'm marinating things, I will whisk up my marinade, whatever that is, and pour that into a Ziploc bag and then put in my tofu or tempeh or veggies or whatever it is. And using my mouth, suck out a lot of the, suck out a lot of the air. So I don't do that in front of classes. Uh, but to get out as much air as you possibly can, almost so you're doing like a vacuum seal, right? Seal it off, throw it in the fridge. That way, you're not always in the fridge or wherever you have your, your food, tossing it around, tossing it around, tossing it around. So that's just a little tip for you. But today, we're just going to um, keep it out here on the counter just so that you can, you can see it and get hungry for it. Now I'm just going to take the rest of our tofu and just put it aside because we're not going to use it right now. I'm going to leave it for the staff here because I know that they'll gobble it up. I know how they are. Okay, so we've got our beautiful tofu soaking up all that beautiful, uh, delicious marinade. And in here, I've got some hot water. We're also going to add some brown rice noodles. You can use glass noodles, brown rice noodles. You can use those. Um, those really low calorie shirataki noodles, whatever you want. You don't even have to use noodles, but you know, we'll use noodles. We'll use noodles. Don't be scared of noodles. Okay, so this is heating up, and this is just the Annie Chun's um, brand, Spearbergs, I think, yes, Spearbergs, Pad Thai brown rice noodles. So whatever, uh, whatever you can find, and actually that's almost boiling. I'm going to wait for that to boil so that we can really get those things nice nice and cooked well. Okay, so the rest of the marinade we're going to add. So remember we have two separate marinades now because we want this really rich, beautiful flavor. It's still light, but there's, we're still imparting a lot of flavor. Okay, so banh mi's have, um, you know, well, usually pork, pork, they're doing tofu, and they also have these really nice, beautiful pickled vegetables. And the only ones that we're gonna do today are, and I had a choice here, uh, is cucumber, and that's going to really soak up the marinade great. Cucumber and a little bit of shredded carrot. So I am just going to, mm, I think I'm going to quarter. Yeah. So I'll cut this guy in half, put that to the side, and then I'm just going to take the complete cucumber that I have left and cut that into fourths lengthwise. Cut that into fourths length, length, lengthwise. 
It's Friday, everybody. All right, now I'm gonna cut that into fourths. Essentially, these are just bite-sized pieces. Like, let me just sharpen this little guy. Okay. All right, so now, yeah, I can fit that into my mouth. Now we're gonna put all of our cucumber That is just going to soak right up. And you know, you can get the mini cucumbers, the regular size, the hothouse, the organics, whatever you want. If you have them coming up already and you have a garden at home, good for you. That's awesome. Now, um, next, I'm going to take our carrots and mix all of those up. Okay, now, so now we've got our cucumber, our carrots and our tofu all together marinating. Yeah? Yeah, so it's nice and wet and everybody's really happy. So we're gonna let that sit for just a second. I'm gonna wash off my hands. Okay. All right, so next we're going to, let's get these, you know what, let's get these, oh yeah, yeah, we're ready for these noodles. And I'll tell you, I, I am not a lover of these bags, right? Because you open them up and it just like tears all the way. So just transfer everything to a, another sealed container of some sort and put it in your pantry if you're not using all the noodles. And chances are you're probably not unless you're cooking for a really large crowd. And really the noodles are part of a bigger, um, a bigger dish. And they're really not, you know, this is not a pasta dish. It's not the main event. So go as heavy or light as you want on the noodles, but certainly uh, it's gonna be sharing real estate with a lot of other goodness. So it, you don't need a whole lot. Okay, and we'll just repackage these a little bit later today. Now these cook really, really fast, um, just a couple of minutes. And then what I'm going to do is just um, put them through or put them into a colander and run some cold water over them because I want them to stop cooking. But we'll just give them a few minutes. Yeah, they're already becoming really nice and limp, just what we want. So we'll give that a few minutes. Now, um, we're also going to use some bok choy in, in our banh mi, because you know, there's always bok choy, bok choy, plenty of greens in a banh mi, and uh, a little bit of a yellow onion, some fresh, and some fresh green peas, or, or well, fresh, but I have frozen today. So um, let's go ahead and got that nice and hot. We're not gonna need our carrots anymore. And I think I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna clean up our workspace just a little bit, just to get some of these seeds off of here from our cucumber. All right, this is how I like to cut an onion. So you take an onion, any onion does not, does not matter. And we're just gonna cut off one of the ends. Now, um, when you're holding a knife, I, I always do this with my students at the Center for Plant-Based Living. This is not how you hold a knife, right? And this is not how you hold a knife because I don't, I'll tell you what, I don't know anybody who has a finger, an index finger that strong that it can really get through all those root vegetables that I know that you're cutting. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take your knife, doesn't matter what, what kind of knife, take your knife, and pinch the bottom of the blade and then wrap your hand around the top of that handle. Now, if you do that, just give that a try in your kitchen this evening before you start chopping. You'll notice that you really have a good control over that knife. And if you don't typically hold your knife like this, it's gonna feel a little weird, but just, just do it for the next week or so. And you'll probably feel like, oh gosh, I really have a lot more control over what's on my cutting board. And that's what we want. That is the name of the game. 
Okay, back to the onion. We're going to cut off one of the ends. Doesn't matter which end. Put that to the side. And then put that cut side, cut side down. And we're going to put that right on our cutting board. And then you're going to take your knife, remember, pinch, pinch, handle, put that all the way through your onion. So now you have two equal ish parts. Then what you're going to do here is take off, you know, you know this part. You're going to take off the outermost layer on each of the sides. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut all the way through the onion. So you'll hear me hit the cutting board, but we're not going to go all the way up to the top. Let me show you what I'm doing. See, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. And then we're going to go one time in here because this is a small little guy. So we're going to cut right in there in between. And then one, just one more cut perpendicular to our first cut. And now we have these nice little dices, right? And that's all there is to it. That gives you nice, even cuts. Now, what we're going to do is the very same thing on this guy. See, all the way down. And because this is a little bit bigger onion, I'm going to give it two cuts, two slices, I should say, right in the middle. And then here we go with that last cut. And there is our dice. Okay. Now I'm going to go back over here and just see how our noodles are doing. Yeah, I'm going to pull the heat down. We're about there. Okay. So I like to keep um, I like to keep a, a bowl around, kind of a trash bowl or a compost bowl, whatever. But it really just helps to keep the workspace somewhat clean. I don't always have a clean workspace, so. But this, but the bowl usually helps. Just a, an easy, easy little tactic. Okay, so over a large skillet, which is what we have, a large hot skillet, we're gonna add the onion. You can add a little bit of salt if you want to, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then we're gonna add just a little bit of, the, um, of water if we need it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a dry saute. And before I get to that, because that's gonna take a lot of my attention, I am going to take our colander, and I have some beans in here right now for our next dish, but I'm just going to transfer those to a bowl. The nice white beans, they're delicious. I'm gonna turn off our stove or our uh, top, and then I'm just going to take these noodles and put them right in our colander and hit them with a little bit of cold water just to get them to stop cooking, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is as I'm going to add them back to the colander. I'm sorry, add to, I'm adding them back to the skillet, saucepan, whatever this thing is, with a little bit of water, cool water. It'll warm up because the pan's still a little warm, but that's okay. Okay, turn this off, off, off. I just don't want those noodles to get sticky, which is why I'm going to keep them in a little bit of water. Okay, so let's talk about a dry saute for a second. I don't use any oil when I'm cooking, um, and we can talk about that as well. But I used to do, I'm just going to get a little bit of, um, a little bit of water. Oh, perfect. So keep a bowl or a little bug or a little container of water near you when you're doing your dry saute. Now, years ago, when I stopped using oil, I thought, well, I'll just use broth and water with my saute, easy enough. Well, if when you do too much broth or water, you really dissipate those flavors and you're not doing anybody a favor, right? We like to do this plant-based cooking. We want the foods to be really robust and tasty, but if you've dissipated in bland flavors, you're not selling anybody, right? And we know that this is the right way to eat. So what you wanna do is use a dry saute. We have a high heat pan right now. So start on a high heat. Add your onions or whatever the recipe calls for, but typically you're gonna start with onions, carrots, celery, that kind of thing, right? Bell peppers, whatever. So add your onions and then just start stirring everything around. Um, 
I just start stirring everything around. Now plants have a lot of water in them. So that water will start to release out of, out of the, uh, the plants, any plant you're using, in this case, onions, which will help. Now, when you put your onions in your pan, you're still at a high heat. What, what I want you to do is pull your heat back down to a medium, medium high, which is a cooking temperature. Just get that high heat up in there, really get, start a little bit of a sear on the vegetables, pull it down to a cooking temperature. Now, a couple of things. Um, the, I don't use oil in my cooking and I don't, like even the salad dressings don't have oil. And even the boxed things that I buy, if I buy some food packaged items, and you really can't get away with that in this modern world, I try to make sure that there's no added oil. Why? Because oil, I don't care if it's coconut oil, uh, palm oil, um, olive oil, castor oil. <laughs> it's all 120 calories per tablespoon. 120 calories per teeny, teeny, tiny tablespoon, right? And how many of us go, 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 just coat our pans or coat our vegetables when we're roasting our vegetables? So per tablespoon, that is 120 calories. If you're adding two, three, four, five, six tablespoons, think of all of that, all that, all those calories. Now, not only that, you're also adding 100% fat. And that is 14 grams of fat per tablespoon per tablespoon. Yes, I know. So for those reasons and some other health reasons, I do not use oil. You can get around it. So we've got some nice searing going on here. Not some nice caramelization. Now, sometimes I will add a pinch of salt and what salt will do in the cooking process, not at the end, but during the cooking process, what salt will do to these onions is further pull out that water, really condensing those sugars, creating that nice yummy caramelization that we love. So that's like a quick caramelization that you can do right there on your stovetop by adding just a pinch of salt and really keeping everything moving. Okay, so now this is looking really, really yummy. We've got some nice browning going on. And I just wanna check my notes to see when I'm gonna add the tofu. Um, okay. Okay, so now I'm going to add the, yeah, I'm gonna add the tofu and then we're gonna add the peas. Okay. So I'm just gonna pick the tofu out here and put it straight on our skillet. This is gonna give just a little bit of browning to the, end, to the sides of our tofu. You don't even have to do this step if you don't want to because you could eat tofu just like this. No, no, don't be afraid of it, it's fine, fine, fine. Delicious actually. All right, I think I'm just gonna add, yeah, a couple more. All right, so, it's really good, I should make this. Okay, so you might wanna pull your heat up just a little bit more just to start to brown the sides of your tofu. So you're just gonna leave it in there, leave your tofu on the pan for you know a minute or so, and then just start flipping it, flipping it. Now, if again, if it starts to stick a little bit, just add a, just a teaspoon of water at a time. Here's the secret, here's the secret with dry sauteing. When your vegetables just start to stick a little bit, if they do, if they start to stick a little bit, that's when you add a little bit of water or maybe a vegetable broth, whatever it is, no oil. Because then once you have a little bit of sticking, that's gonna create a little bit of browning, right? Just a little bit of like pre-burning, if you will, okay? Don't be scared. When you add a little bit of liquid, you're going to deglaze. So you're gonna pull that stuff, that nice, beautiful browning up, on, off, up, up off the pan and fold it into your food. And that is where the flavor is. So give that a try over the weekend. Yeah, see, we've got the tofu that's already starting to brown just a little bit on the sides. Now, yes, this, these are nonstick pans. I get that. Not everybody has that. Not everybody wants that, whatever. It does make things a little bit easier. However, however, uh, I have, I've been married 16 years and I still have that same cookware and I can do a dry saute with 
awful old non not yeah, non nonstick cookware at home. So you just have to really the secret is is another secret is to just stay on top of it. Be on top of it. Be a mindful cook, right? Just get a, do not put everything in your pan and then get on your phone, check your Instagram feed. No, this is not what we're going to do. We're paying attention to our food. Okay, so got some nice browning going on. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and add some peas. Get those really well cooked in or just actually warmed through. So because we're doing a cooking class today and really time is of the essence, I'm not gonna spend, I'm not gonna really cook this the way I would and all I mean by that is I would just have more time to cook it. That's all. So we're, we're going through all the steps. Okay, so let's, we've got that heated up. We've got our noodles ready to go. Mm, what I think I'm going to do now is just grab a serving bowl. I'm going to put these guys in the back. Our cucumber in the back and take our bok choy. You can use baby bok choy, you can use mature bok choy, doesn't, you know, totally up to you. Now, of course, you're going to use your greens. And what I do, let's, I'll just use two of these today. I kind of V it out just like that. So we have this leftover. We're gonna use a little bit of that, by the way. So here you can just take these leaves, these beautiful leaves and stack them and then roll them. And then almost just like a julienne so that you have nice little ribbons of greens. And then what I'm also gonna do is give this one down the middle. So this makes it just really easy to get into your mouth so you don't have it all over the place, right? Okay, now, oh, here's our bowl. I'm gonna put our greens over to the side. And then what I'm gonna also do is take our stalks because they are not void of, of beautiful plant nutrients, right? We want as much of it as we can get. So a really thin slice. This has the consistency, the texture of like celery. So it's a really just nice part of the plant. And then you can chop it up a little bit. So we're gonna put that. Okay, now, as you're doing this, remember that we had some marinade off to the side, yes? Oh, see, I don't know if you can see this really nice browning happening here. It's really, really delicious. Now, if you have, if you have a really hot pan or it's starting to stick a little bit, use a little bit of your marinade to do glaze. If you still have some. And you might get some, some big smoke business happening, that's okay, that's all right. Just stay on top of it, stay on top of it, stay on top of it, you'll be okay. All right, so now we're gonna wrap up this guy. And I am going to actually, okay, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in our colander again, just to get rid of a lot of that water. Easy, easy. Okay. So now it's all drained. I'm going to put it back into our saucepan just because it's easy to get to. Take your noodles. Whoop, jumper. Okay. Take your noodles. And then I'm going to turn off our heat here. Filter out some of that water. 
Take this over to the side. Then, oh, we're not finished. We are not finished with this one. We've got our marinated cucumbers and carrots. Oh, and just the flavor bombs going on here. You know, not, I mean, not only the flavor bombs, but you've got temperature bombs too. So you've got a little bit of chill, you've got a lot, of, a little bit of heat, you've got crunch, you've got soft. Oh, forget it. Now, 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 now. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're almost there, but not yet. Hang on, hang on. Herbs. Mm -hmm. So whatever you want, whatever you have, I had, I have mint, the darn weed, in my house or in my yard at home. So we're bringing some mint. Usually I would just slice this, but you know, put that all over. This is imparting more phytonutrients, phyto meaning plant, phytonutrients into the dish, which is what you always want. I have a little bit of cilantro here. If you're a cilantro person, add that in there. We've got basil. You can put anything, if you, if you want to do like some Thai basil, it would be really good in here. That's a favorite. Yeah, so, and but mint is actually so delicious. I'm putting more of that. So this is the banh mi bowl that I really like to make often, especially during the summer, if I want something with a little bit of heat, and I mean like temperature heat, um, but that is not overwhelming and really heavy. So this is our first one. This is the banh mi. And I'm sure that we're all gonna be digging into that very soon. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get rid of just these little guys. All right, so next what I'm going to do is um, we're gonna make a wrap. I'm gonna just put all of this business in here. This is our leftover banh mi, which again, I know we're gonna eat. I'm just gonna wipe this out, rinse this out real quickly. Bring our heat back up. This is, I mean, these flavors don't, you know, I know you're looking at the recipe if you have it. Um, and you're gonna think, I don't, you know, I don't know what she's smoking. That, that, that does not look good. And the first time I made this, it did not look good. But you're gonna be so surprised, I promise. You're gonna love it, love it, love it. Okay. So, on me is done. And you know what? You probably don't wanna look at this. See, this is what I mean by my, my crazy workspace. It gets a little overwhelming. Okay. If you're not a clean cook, you are in good company. <laughs> okay, this is a white bean and avocado wrap. We're gonna use northern beans. So you can use cannellini beans. Cannellini beans are an Italian bean. They are nice and um, plump and have a really thin skin. And they're really, really delicious. Um, but I wanted something a little bit smaller for today. So that's why we're using the northern bean. And so now we have our coconut aminos, some balsamic vinegar, um, avocados, lime juice, parsley, all kinds of things in there. And then we're gonna dice it. We're gonna um, add some diced green chilies. I know, that, that's weird. Cause usually it's like, you're just gonna use that in like a Mexican dish. Um, that's the only time I used to always use these diced chilies. But then I thought, well, I'll just add it to it. It works. All right. Um, we're going to, let me, um, oh, okay. I didn't think about that. We want to warm up our beans because we want to mash them. And so the best way to do that is to, the best way to mash them really is just to warm them up first. And then we're going to impart some flavor by adding the liquid aminos. And I think I'm going to, Okay, so what we're gonna do first is add the beans to our, to our dish. We're gonna add the liquid aminos. And um, when the liquid, liquid aminos have really kind of cooked off is when we're going to mash them. So here's, the aminos. 
And if you want to pull your heat all the way up to this during this time, that's fine. Just make sure that you're really on top of it. Because again, you don't want it to get away from you. Now, um, another reason, and this, this may be the winner, you know, because some people are like, that's okay, I can handle the fat, I can handle the calories, whatever. This could be the selling point for you if you're not into that oil-free thing. I, um, and I love to tell this story. I was teaching at another venue in St. Louis, and um, it was an Italian cooking class, so a plant-based Italian cooking class. And this young couple comes in, cute, cute, and um, he's a med student and from Italy. <laughs> and the wife was just adorable. Um, and they had the seventh month old at home, and they said, well, we're here because we want to become better cooks and better eaters for our baby. I said, great, bring it, let's do this. So it was a hands-on class. We had about 12, 15 people. And, um, and again, we were doing an Italian class and white girl right here, not from Italy. I was trying to teach him how to cook. Okay, so that made me nervous. So fear not, fear not, my friends. So um, everybody got to cooking and the place where we were, the venue, um, beneath the stovetop actually had all their oils and, and vinegars down below. And I could see them across the kitchen. And he was going like this leaning down to get the oil because he was going to start sauteing the vegetables. Everybody had a different recipe to do and they were working on something. And so I run across the kitchen and I tap him on the arm and I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm getting the olive oil so we can start this dish, you know? I said, no, 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 we don't use any oil. So again, from Italy and I'm going to tell him not to use any oil. He thought I had three heads, okay? And I felt like I did too, by the way he looked at me. So uh, fast forward, I taught them how to do the bread saute, fine, they finished the dish. After class, we all sit around a big table together, all you know, 12 or 15 of us, and we go around and everybody talks about their, their dish that they cooked. And we got to him and I started to sweat again. I thought, oh gosh, what is he going to say? This is the worst thing ever. And he said, I kid you not, he said, this is one of the best dishes I've actually ever had because I could actually, because I could taste the food. And what I mean by that, and what he meant by that, was that there was no oil coating the inside of his mouth. Now, what does oil do? We put oil in pans or on food so that it doesn't stick to the pan or, or to the baking dish, right? Well, it's a buffer. Now, you're also buffering the inside of your mouth. So your, that food does not penetrate your taste buds. You can't taste the food. You think you can taste the food. So you add more salt, sugar, and fat, because that you can taste through the oil. But you can't just taste these beautiful flavors, these natural flavors through the oil. And he was really excited about that. And I was really excited about it. So, so that's another way I, I think that, uh, oh, I know that it, it's another reason I don't use any oil. So I, if you and, and you know, your spouse or your significant other or whoever's in your home, or maybe it's just you, that's, you know, for the next 30 days, try to do no oil, at least just in your cooking. And I think that you'll really, really, really find a difference in the taste of the flavors that you're cooking up. I think you'll be amazed. Okay, these are nice and warm. Now, we're going to, and a lot of our, our coconut aminos have, have uh, evaporated and, and burned off. So I'm just going to use my, you can just see, I'm just using a fork. You can use a potato masher if you want. That's totally fine. Whatever. But what we're doing now is we're creating a paste. We're create, this is all part of the inside of the wrap. And so this is going to help hold uh, the greens, so our spinach, and our tomatoes in there. So you've got to create that paste. There we go. Oh, it smells so good in here. Okay, just about, you don't have to get every single bean, not a big deal. I like to, when I eat my food, I like to, like, especially if a burger, I kind of want to, it doesn't have to be all, all pureed. It doesn't need to be baby food. Now, oh, that's just delicious. 
Now I'm going to add a little bit of our white aminos. Oh, I'm sorry, white balsamic. Shoot, white balsamic. And that's really easy to find too. It's right next to the red balsamic. If you cannot find it, if you don't want it, if you're like, I'm not going to go out and buy a white, I have a red. Fine, use a red. Fine, fine. <laughs> you will not ruin the dish. It will still be very delicious. It'll just be your rendition of it. Okay, so now we're going to, um, I, have, I do this so many different ways all the time. And okay, so I'm going to take all of this business and put it into this bowl. And yeah, okay. Actually, I'm gonna put our chilies in here and then mix this up, put it into the bowl, and then add the avocado to it. Yeah, okay. So just to recap, we put our beans in here with the with the aminos, with the coconut aminos, let it heat up, mash down the beans, and then added the white balsamic and the green chilies. And that's what we have in here. And it's going to be very hot, really. Now we're going to add our avocado. Just take your knife and go right around your avocado. And I know it's Cinco de Mayo coming up, so it might be difficult to find avocados. And just take your avocado and put it right into that bowl. Take out your pit. Right into that bowl. Now I'm going to get, get another, um, another fork and then we're just going to mash again. So what you could do is if you had some time, um, you could wait and then mash again with your hands if you wanted to. Just, actually, I usually just glove up and wait. Um, use some just some food grade gloves and mix everything together. Um, but you know, there's a, clearly a fork works as well. Or you can use your potato masher again, whatever. Just get everything really well integrated. So you can see how this is kind of a weird thing, right? Like this is a weird, uh, different, you won't say weird. Um, beans and chilies and, and avocado. So it is, a, I guess it is, it is a little bit Mexican, but then we put balsamic in there. So, you know, I don't know. You know, we're all inclusive here, right? Okay. Now, that looks great. Now, give it a taste, um, you know, and then just kind of adjust to the flavors if you, you know, if you want a little bit more acid in there, you can put a little bit more balsamic in there if you wanted to. If you wanted a little bit more savoriness, you can add a hit or two of your um, aminos and just mix it all up. But you want to make sure you don't add too much liquid because you really want a nice thick paste, right? Okay, so then we're going to add, we're going to get out, I should say, our, um, our tortillas. And tortillas are a tough one. They're not always, you know, so great for you. So do just just look at your labels and um, and try to get the best thing you can. Just you know, the less ingredients, the better. Typically, is kind of the name of the game. Um, and if you can find some that don't have any oil in them, great. But you know, sometimes it's it's a difficult thing. But we all do what we can with the information and tools that we have, right? So um, what we're going to do here is add. Um, our mixture. And I've got some Roma tomatoes. Really thin. Some 
spinach that cleaned off earlier. And so that's why you want that nice pasty, you know, because my spinach just sinks right in there. Exactly what you want. And then some tomatoes right on top. And, you know, you can put it in the middle, you can put it a third of the way down, whatever works. Um, and then just roll up. So I was very generous with this one, as you can see. <laughs> you kind of have to, you know, do this a couple of times and then you realize, oh yeah, I only need a tablespoon or two of that. But hey, if it's just you at home or you're not eating in front of an audience, who cares, right? And so that's what we have in that nice little mixture. And these are so great. These are so, so great. Okay. Um, put those right up there. And we'll put our salad next to that. Okay. Or I should say our bottom next to that. Okay. So now one more thing. We're going to do an Italian salad. Um, this is you know, whatever Italian chop means to you is, you know, what it means to you. Um, I really am a lover of um, artichoke hearts and hearts of palm. So that's why the salad has that. And they usually come in these, you know, the cans where you can just pop them open. I'm going to get rid of the liquid inside. Now this is, you know, this, again, it's, it's totally up to you what you want to put in here, um, but it's the salad dressing actually that is so special. And we'll walk through that together. Okay. And I'm going to grab, um, you know what, I'm going to put this guy, this is the rest of our on me. I'm just going to use this as our salad bowl. This is actually the perfect size. Give it just a splash of water. Clean that guy out. Okay. Salad bowl. Now, I'm using, you can use, of course, whatever greens you want, um, but I'm going to be using just um, romaine because I really like that crunch. It's more of like an Italian chopped salad. And I just feel like an Italian chopped salad is going to have a crunch, right? So I've cleaned this guy out as much as I can. And I'm just going to take, I don't know, the first several inches of it. Now that's just because I, you know, I'm not making a big salad right now because there's just a few of us here. And these ratios are going to be different depending on who's around, right? So we've got our greens in there. And now we're going to add our red onion. So again, with cutting the onion, hold your knife. And take off one of the ends, put that, that cut side down, remember? We're gonna go through the middle again. I'm not gonna use this entire onion. Take off the outermost layer. Compost bin. Boy, this onion just wants to go everywhere. Okay. I'm going to do pretty small chops because a red onion can be um, pretty potent when you're biting into it raw, right? So I'm going to give this three cuts and my eyes are already watering. And then we're just going to do one I think two, and then we'll just wrap this up and keep it in the fridge. So we've got our onion. 
I have these sun-dried tomatoes and they're in this little package um, and uh, they don't have any oil in them. So you can reconstitute them if you want to, just putting them in a, a bowl of warm water for about 15 minutes. But I'll tell you what, I have found that um, that really, that really dissipates, dissipates the flavor of those as well. So I wouldn't suggest that. Um, I'd say just cut them up even more. And these are already sliced if you can find those. So um, these are from Deerberg's um, here in St. Louis, if you're not joining us from St. Louis. Or um, Trader Joe's has a really great one too. And they're the, 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 they're the full size. Uh, just, so you just give them a, a real quick little chop. Uh, use that already. We don't need that. Okay, so now I have my hearts of palm. Hearts of palm are just so underrated. Um, I know they're a little bit expensive, and that's because they are labor intensive to get from the palm to your plate. But wow, they're just so so great. There's so many things you can do with them. I like to make a seafood dish out of them. I know plant-based seafood without seafood. And then just put those right into your salad. We're actually just gonna use one little cylinder. We've got quartered artichoke hearts. Oh, I know, this is great. This is the business. All right, so we're just gonna do just a couple. We'll leave the rest for a spinach artichoke dip. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, put these off to the side you know we have that leftover spinach so i think we could do something with that so that is our beautiful salad and just for the heck of it because i like to get as many nutrients in my salads as possible and i like cilantro so and since this is a, a global day here at the living well center and we're just gonna with all of our meals i'm just gonna add that to the to the mix as well okay so this is our Italian chopped salad. I'm gonna finish it off with that. Now, dressing. Now, there's a lot of people who come into, into my shop and they say, oh, you know, I'm taking, I'm, I'm really taking control of my, my food. Um, I'm making my own salad dressing. And I think, oh, you know what? That is so wonderful. Tell me, tell me all about it. And um, they say, well, you know, why don't you take a look at this recipe that I made the other night? And it always, I, unless they know about the no oil thing, it is always going to be a half cup of oil and then all the spices and the, you know, the other flavors. And I think, well, it's a really, 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 really good effort. 100% effort, A plus effort. Um, but remember how much, you know, how bad, or, or well, how much we don't want to do oil and for all the reasons we already talked about. So if you're talking about a half cup of oil, I mean, that is like, 800, 900, 1,000 calories right there. And you wonder why, you're, if you're trying to lose weight, you wonder why you're not losing weight. Or if you're highly inflamed, you wonder why you're not, how, why, you're still, why you're still inflamed. So the oil really is just not, not our friend. So let's get around that, okay? Let's make a salad dressing. And now we have fat in our salad dressings. We just don't have any oil. Okay, so, um, Actually, I am, no, I'm not gonna use that because I have other tomatoes. We have tahini paste. Now, tahini is going to be hulled or ground sesame seeds, white sesame seeds. It's going to be a very plain Jane peanut butter, if you will, and a little bit runnier. So I know it's not sexy, but for friends, it actually kind of is sexy. I don't know if you can see this. It's really, it's, it's, it's sort of runny. Um, but it's just whole sesame seeds. Now, make sure that when you buy tahini, you can find it at any grocery store, T-A-H-I-N-I. -I. Uh, when you buy it, make sure, look at the label and make sure it just says ground sesame seeds or whole sesame seeds. It doesn't have anything else in it. One time I was buying a can of tahini at a grocery store I usually don't go to and I looked at the, uh, the label and it said ground tahini and it had like three different types of oils and some other kind of stabilizers to remain shelf stable. And yep, went back on the shelf. So there are tahinis out there. 
that have added oils. Why? I do not know. So you don't need it. So this is going to be our base, this tahini. Now I'm going to add mustard. Um, mustard is a staple in a lot, of, a lot of dressings. Usually they say mustard powder. And go ahead and buy it if you want to. Or if you have it, great, use it. Uh, but most people are just going to have regular mustard at home, which is why I'm just going to use a little bit of regular mustard. Gives it a little bit of a zing. You can try Dijon too. That would be totally fine. Now we're going to add our liquid sweetener. So that is our, our um, maple syrup. Or, you know, if you want to, if you like to use honey, you can use honey. Um, date paste is also a really, 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 really good one. But I like the flavor that the maple imparts in this. So that's why I like to use it here. Juice of one half lemon. So this is our acid. And I'm just, see, I don't see any seeds in this guy. Now, if you don't, now, I, because I just said acid, um, if you don't have any lemons around and you're like, I have to make this today, uh, you can use, if you have any vinegar, so like a white balsamic would be nice in here also. You want some, you want a little bit of, of acid in here. And we'll actually talk about, um, we'll talk about a formula in just a minute, real quickly. Now, I'm going to add some oregano and garlic. This, I just have some oregano and garlic and salt and pepper in here. Um, so that's going to be our spices for this guy. Now, also what I like is, again, with the Trader Joe's, I mean, I think that I, I should be, I, there should be some kind of like affiliation with Trader Joe's that I have. Um, they have something called 21 Salute Seasoning, and it is 21 different seasonings, I'm sorry, herbs to create a seasoning, and it's sodium free. It's delicious. They've had it for years and years. It's $1.99. I suggest you go buy two or three little containers of it, because that will take the place of a lot of, of probably your spices in your cabinet. So I add it to salad dressings on top of pizzas and burger mixes, all that kind of stuff. So now I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to mix it. So mix all of this up. You could just put it in a blender. Um, if this were like in a ball jar, like a canning jar, I would add my immersion blender in there and get everything nice and whisked up. But this is just fine. However you want to do it, totally fine. It's going to be a little bit yellowish. Give that a taste. Mm. That is delicious. Put that right on top. Now a salad dressing, real, real quick. Um, actually, if you have any pine nuts or anything crunchy to go on top today, I have some almonds, crunchy almonds that are gonna go on top. A little crunch is always nice. A salad dressing, you're gonna to wanna to have five components just to start. If you're, you know, people say, oh, I don't even know how to start with a salad dressing. And I get it, it's a little bit, it's a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Um, but kind of think about five different parts. Um, you wanna have, of fat, so our fat today was tahini, right? Um, let's see, when I have a fat and acid, you wanna cut through that fat with something, because with all that fat, you know how you can get in your mouth, you know, there's, there's so much fat, there's a lot of peanut butter or something like that. So you want an acid to, to get through that. Then you want, a, actually you could probably just do three, and then you want a spice, so you want a spice to get through that. So let's just say three actually, just to get started. So a fat and acid and a spice. And then of course, liquid. So water just to get everything moving. Um, so those, actually those are the, we'll just, we'll start slow. Just those three components will create a really nice balanced salad dressing. So if you just take those three things and then go through your cabinets at home or your, your, uh, uh, your refrigerator, then, um, and just start kind of playing with it, then I think that you'll, you'll find some really good little Nice little salad dressings that you didn't even think that you could put together. And I have a little bit of basil. We're going to top this off because what is an Italian salad without basil? Clearly not. And with all the summer upon us, sometimes people don't have a whole lot of space for gardens. I know that I'm not doing a garden this year, but I'm always going to have fresh herbs around. Because just because you can't grow a head of lettuce doesn't mean you can't have 
some herbs, and this is also immune boosting. So that is the three dishes that we have. I hope you enjoy. And um, I am at the Center for Plant-Based Living in Kirkwood. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. If you have any questions, I'm around for you. Thanks for joining today.